Good morning. morning. You're going to get cold sitting up here. It's fine. Be nice if we had the old pot belly stove lit up. <laughs> That's been a few years, I imagine. I imagine there was one in here at one time. Both sides. They probably filled up the hole since. I know our home church when we were growing up had one. Uh, I don't know if it's a, I'm sure it's a pot belly, is what it was, but it was uh, everybody would get up there and gather around it before we started singing, so it was. I was just a kid, but I remember it was it was nice. Uh, well, good morning. Good morning. It's good to see each other this morning. Glad to have all of our visitors and friends with us. Those who traveled. Um, today's uh, our first big blizzard of the year, and uh, we made it through so far. I, the probably the slickest part is about what 150 yards from my house, coming up that hill. Uh, it's, actually, you have to go the back road to get a good clear road. But be careful if you're out. Uh, Tammy was going to try to make it and be here this morning too, but. She, uh, with her stress fractures, if she falls, uh, she'll be in a, a bad way. So keep her in your prayers. She's going to try to make it to Browns if it warms up to 15 anyway. So maybe. Uh, let's look at our announcements this morning. Uh, again, we're glad you're here. Uh, we've got a Tennessee River District, which is what our new district name is, training for leaders. Uh, that's uh, those are on the PPRC, lay leader, treasurer, church leadership. On the 22nd, 2017, at Lexington First, if you're one of those folks, we invite you to go. If you need a ride, just please call me, and I'll be glad to give you a ride over there. And that'll be at 2 o'clock on the 22nd of January. The other announcements we need to lift up. I have a birthday card for Mark Virginia Haskins. It'll be a couple of weeks before the birthday. If anyone would like to have a birthday card, you can send it to me. Okay. We have room at the end. We're hosting room at the end Friday night. And so we'll carry food over Friday night, uh, cook them breakfast the next morning, and then take them back. And the uh, place is going to be our driver. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, the 19th, we're going to Rifle and help serve lunch down there. So anybody wants to go? The 19th. The 19th. Okay. What time do y'all go? We go, we have one person at 8.30 and then the rest of them come at 10.30. Okay. <coughs> okay. Right. Sounds good. Anyone else? Anniversaries. I had one birthday. Anniversaries. Jane's birthday was yesterday. Yes. 49. Oh. <laughs> Anybody else have a birthday? <laughs> if not, let's sing happy birthday to our friend this morning, okay? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday. Hope you have many, many, many more. If there's nothing else, let us uh, join in a song of praise. Number 310, invite you those that are able to stand. Number 310, he lives. Yeah. 
together in our bulletin for our proclamation of faith. We'd like to join together with us this morning. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Ask Caroline now bring us our, our scripture reading this morning from Ephesians. Scripture reading this morning is from Ephesians 3, verses 1 through 12. For this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles, surely you have heard about the administration of God's grace that was given to me for you, that is, the mystery made known to me by revelation, as I have already written briefly. In reading this, then, you will be able to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to men in other generations, and it is now been revealed by the Spirit to God's holy apostles and prophets. This mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body, and sharers together in the promise in Jesus Christ. I became a servant of this gospel by the gift of God's grace given me through the working of his power. Although I am less than the least of all God's people, this grace was given to me to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery, which for ages past was kept hidden in God, who created all things. His intent was that now, through the church, the manifest wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms, according to his eternal purpose, which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. In him and through him, in him and through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Caroline. Class for ushers come now to receive our morning offering.
Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the many blessings that you give us. We pray now, God, God, that you would bless the gift and the giver. And Lord, we ask that you would all remind us that all that we have and all we see is, is from you. And we thank you again for your glorious name. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Stand, let us uh, let me see. I think we'll do. let's go ahead and be seated, and I'll, we'll go over our prayer concerns. The pen thief's been out again. I don't know where he went. <laughs> we just have to remember these. Um, let's lift up our prayer concerns today. Have we those on our hearts? Let me lift up. Oh, thank you so much. Anyone? I'd like for us to, yes, people traveling. Also in Syria, there was another bombing this this, this morning. Uh, so much for a ceasefire, but there was like a hundred that was injured, and I don't know how many was, that lost their lives. Go ahead, Marie. I was going to say, as our own country transitions to a new president, let's keep ourselves in prayer, this nation, and what's going on, which is way more than I could say in two minutes here. Mm-hmm. Remember our country and nation. Anyone else? The lion and hawk were broken into this week. They're what? Edge, but if you just keep on their I didn't hear you. Malayan and hawk and our daughter Malayan. Their house was broken into. Oh. 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 You got the safes too. Wow. Unfortunately, and I hope that's not true. Most of the time, it's people that know us that do something like that, and let's pray that's that be took care of. I don't guess I know your daughter. I didn't know you was old enough to have another daughter. Well, we got a 24, 25 year old. Oh my goodness. Okay. Five year old in New Mexico, the 24. There are members here, but my wife's getting married at Boys Road. Do y'all think she looks old enough to have somebody at 24 and 25? My goodness. Now he does, but she don't. <laughs> Sorry, I had to throw that out there. I tell students I, I, I hide it well. <laughs> but we will be in prayer for them. Anyone else? My youngest is getting married next weekend. Oh, yeah. Congratulations. Sarah Garland will be married Saturday in Cleveland, Tennessee. Same. Same travels. Yes. Sanctity of mind. <coughs> Keep your mind. Anyone else? Uh, Marie's mom. She's been struggling, struggling to do save her leg. Save her, yeah. Yeah. Where's she at, Marie? She's in uh, Fort Pierce, Florida, and a member of the Fort Pierce United Methodist Church down there. She's one of us. Well, uh, yeah. y'all knew the story, you'd know what a big deal it was that I can say that. Mm. <laughs> we'll keep her in our prayers, certainly. Please do. She's, she's uh, I gotta tell you, just real quick,
quit in spite of everything, and she is going through some major health things. She has the most incredible attitude. I mean, seriously, I am amazed. It's amazing what God can do. Yes. It is. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, also remember the, uh, uh, I how to say this, the young mentally challenged man that was attacked by the four mm. uh, teens, uh, just absolutely horrific and no excuse for it. And I just keep, uh, keep him in our prayers. And uh, we, uh, it's bad enough when someone's attacked that, that is, has the ability to defend themselves, but when someone does it, it's just, it's just beyond our understanding. Be in prayer for them. And also for the uh, bombing in uh, Fort Lauderdale uh, airplane. Uh, there's just such senseless things that happen. Uh, bombing, I said not bombing, it was a, a shooting. Uh, we almost can say those synonymous to, uh, together because they, uh, we have so much things happening. Anyone else? Our scouts are going, Boy Scouts are going camping next weekend, the Fall Creek Falls, for a hiking camping trip. It's usually rainy and cold. Uh, it's part of their winter camping. So just keep all those guys. Uh, that reminds me to lift up my son-in-law. Uh, he's uh, doing uh, survival training up north. I don't know exactly where he's at, but somewhere up north for two weeks. And then he is going to be shipped to uh, Guantanamo Bay mm -hmm. for seven months. So keep us in your prayers. Um, that is what he does. Though. He's a military Navy man, and corpsman. He'll be... Uh, the ironic thing is he'll be making sure that those that were uh, arrested and, and uh, being prosecuted are picked up in Guantanamo Bay for, uh, for terrorism. He's got to make sure they stay alive. Can you imagine that? That's his job. So be in prayer for uh, him, Austin, and my daughter who will be uh, trying to get things took care of while he's gone for seven months. So. I'd like to keep a family in y'all's prayers. The husband's going through some difficult uh, choices, I guess, with his career path. He just wants everyone to keep him in his prayer. Okay. Jason Amy is in the hospital. He has a serious problems with his lung. Jason. A E D I. Okay. Anyone else? Again, we lift up those who are traveling because when this, when this ice melts and it refreezes, we need to be very careful. Uh, don't fall and get hurt. And a lot of people getting back home this week. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear God, we just lift every person that's on this list today. We know, dear God, that your ability to take care of things is beyond our understanding and imagination. You are so great and awesome and wonderful, and we praise you for that. Dear God, we pray for those that are traveling. We pray for those that are involved in some um, terrible situations that really need our prayers. And we pray, dear God, for our servicemen and women. We pray for families making career decisions. We pray for uh, mothers and fathers of health, uh, health problems and, and they need a special touch from you. Dear God, we pray for our church and for our nation. We pray for those, Lord, that are standing in a, a place of need today, that uh, need you each day. I pray, dear God, especially for one person on my mind today who is, who is struggling and, and just needs our special prayers. And dear God, be with each of our families, be with our loved ones. Dear God, be with those in the nursing homes and the hospitals and those wherever they may be. And God, you know uh, what our needs are. You know what we uh, need each day. And you know our hurts and wants. And dear God, I just pray that you would be that constant companion we need each moment of our life. And dear God, we could do nothing without you. For you are our Savior, our Lord. You are the one who is our Redeemer. And now, dear God, as we find ourselves in a place of need and want, Lord, we also know that we praise you for all that you have blessed us with. And now, Lord, as we pray together, let us be reminded of the prayer you taught us to pray as your disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, and forgive us of our trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. As we uh, sing our last song together, before we uh, look at God's word again, is uh, number 369, Blessed Assurance. This morning, I don't know why, but I thought just now thought about it. I thought, you know, I was picking Miss Young about uh, being so young, and and you know, didn't realize she had two children. You said 24 and what? 25. 25. Well, I've got a, a 27 and a 29, and no one, no one said, well, brother Steve, you don't look that old either. Nobody said that, so I don't know. Maybe I, I I'm kidding with you, but I, I'm not hurt really. Uh, I was really hurt this week, though. I went to. Uh, fill out our insurance uh, eval thing because you know they want to say your health age or whatever. Don't ever fill one of those out because it would depress you. I filled one out and it said I was uh, 61 year old. And, uh, and that's, uh, that's a little bit, that's 11 years more than I am. So uh, I, 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 said, uh, I said, I'm going to break this computer. It's got some issues. But uh, I told my insurance person when I was filling out the stuff, I said, uh, that makes me feel good. She said, well, maybe in a year from now you'll be back to 60. You know, you just work on it. <laughs> So I, I just, anyway. But anyway, I had to share that with you and just get a smile out of your face. Today's a good day. God has blessed us. How wonderful it is to be in God's house. Uh, today is, we can think about a fresh start because as we start the new year together, it is certainly a fresh start. And I want you to, to hear that today. If you're going through a time in your life and you're wondering, uh, well, how do I re-begin? Well, you just re-begin today. You know, we... Uh, uh, I like what uh, Miss Marie said at, at, after the Emmaus. She said it was like a reboot, and that's what we can say. Today is kind of like a reboot. We can uh, restart the new year. Uh, the wonderful thing is when we used to move, uh, we didn't move a lot as a pastor. I didn't move that many times, but we would move, and our daughters would start over a new school. They would always uh, begin new, begin fresh. I remember uh, Jenny, she's Jenny now, but she used to be Jennifer when we first gave her a name. Uh, she would change her name. I remember one time it was Jen. One time it was Jenny Janelle. Uh, it was Jennifer Janelle and, and JJ. I mean, it was just all kinds of stuff. And, 
And you know, uh, and so finally we said, well, you got to tell us what we call her something else in front of people. And she say, You're, my name's not that now, Dad. You should know that, you know. And so she tells her new name, and I said, okay, honey, you're gonna have to give us a note that says my daughter's now name is this. Uh, and she and it was kind of like a fresh start for her, and she enjoyed that because she got a chance to reinvent herself and begin to start over. And uh, if you know, if you make enough mistakes in life, you can actually get to a place that you almost perfect those things that you've been making mistakes about because you get a new start each time. You get to start over. And, and you know, I said something to a person one time who was talking about they seemed like they were a failure. And I, and I sat them down, I talked to them, I said, do you know that not one person that is a success has not had a failure before? And I said, so you're just getting ready to be a success. Even though you make failures, uh, that, that happens. You know, Einstein, whoever it is, had failures before they got to have the success. Uh, before they sent a, a person to the moon, they had several failures before it happened. Uh, many people that ran for public office might have, have lost a lot of elections before they got there. And on and on again. We make a lot of mistakes, but today is a fresh start. And today is a new year. As we think about the second week of this new year, let us begin our new year together. Uh, in Matthew chapter 2, beginning verse 1 and reading across, let us hear God's word down to verse uh, 12. And now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem, of Judea in the days of Herod, the king, behold, there came wise men from the east Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and come to worship him. And when Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes and people together, uh, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, art not the least among the princes of Judea, for all these shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, Herod when he had heard privately, called the wise men, and inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for this young child, and when you have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. And when they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the stars they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly with great joy. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Now I'll read just those last, uh, last two verses there to you. I missed those. It says, And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. When they opened their treasures and presented the gifts and gold and frank silk and mirth, and being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed to their own country another way. Uh, and I want you to hear that last part because uh, that's very important because Herod did not want Jesus to be the ruler. He did not want that change to come. But when Jesus came, when Jesus was born, a new, a new change is coming. A new form of leadership is coming. A new king has been born. And a new beginning, a, a new start, a fresh start to the world. We could have had such a great fresh start if the world would just have accepted him as Lord and Savior. But instead, the world has continuously rejected him over and over again in every way, in every fashion. I was... Uh, the other night I had a, had a strange dream. I've had some strange dreams lately. I, uh, and it's nothing bad dreams, it's just strange dreams. You know, it's, I, it's, I thought it said young man dream dreams. And I'm not a young man anymore, so I'm having these, these crazy dreams. I don't know if my sleep machine's out of tune or what, if, it's, if they're pumping nitrogen in my brain or something. I don't know what's happening. You know, if the aliens have took over, I don't think so. But, but anyway, I, 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 I was dreaming about uh, being at a ball game. And I've been to a lot of ball games in my life, and I usually participate, but I wasn't participating in this one. But I was at a ball game, and I was watching the ball game, and there was this young man outside the baseball game, and he had his Bible, and he was standing up against the fence, and he was reading his Bible, and he was praying for all the players. And this security guard come by and said, young man, you can't be doing that. And he said, wow, all I'm doing is reading my Bible and praying for these players they don't get hurt he said well it's causing people to feel uncomfortable they see you reading your bible and they see you praying and, and they just feel like that you're judging them and the man kind of laughed and i said this was a dream but it's so true to reality today he said i he said all i'm doing is reading my bible and praying for these kids that they don't get hurt and that god would direct their life well i'm sorry sir you're going to have to leave 
So I can't read my Bible? He said, no. And then as he left, I, I got involved and I was, I, I was proud of myself, my dream, because I, I confronted the security guard. I didn't get thrown out myself, but I went to the security guard and I said, listen, my wife comes to ball games and other people come to ball games and they bring a book and they read a book and nobody says a word. And they said, well, they're just enjoying a day out reading a, reading a book. But here, somebody comes and brings the Bible and they stand against the fence and they, they pray for the people out there and read it and you're going to throw them out. He said, I'm sorry, my hands are tied. That's just the way it is. We can't offend people. Well, you know, I woke up from that dream and I began to think about that. And maybe that was heavy on my mind because of all the things that are going on in society. But you know, we are much like that dream in society because if we feel offended by what Jesus might do in somebody's life, we're afraid they're going to get a fresh start and change who they are. Years ago, my pastor was uh, uh, trying to minister to this young man who was on drugs. And he'd go to him and he'd talk to him and he got him off, uh, off the drugs, got him coming to church, and he got, he got approached by these two men in his house one day. And they said to him, we want you to leave so-and-so alone. He said, what are you talking about? He said, he's one of our customers, and he's always been going out here with us and buying from us, and, and he's kind of supporting our living, and here you're messing up our living. Now, he went to the pastor's house and told him that. Now, you have to know my former pastor. He's pretty bold. He said to them, he said, you can do what you want to me, but I still have to answer to a higher power than you, and I'm going to help this man as long as I have breath to do so. Praise God. Now the men left because they were astonished, I guess, that he stood up to them. And he always had to kind of keep one eye over his shoulders. He was afraid somebody might come and attack him. But he never regretted the fact that he stood up to them. And he says, I want to help this person have a fresh start, a new beginning. Now here, Jesus was born. A fresh start. Jesus was born, and they said there's going to be a king that's born. He's going to be, uh, go where the star is and go into Bethlehem, the land of Judea, and see this child. And he said they went and brought gifts and gold and frankincense and myrrh and all these things. And, and, and then they, 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 they honored him and they praised him. And they said, this is the new Lord and Savior. And today when we do that, there are still those that are scoffers that are around us that say, oh, that's just, a, that's just another man. That's just another person. They have no power. They have no ability. Even though after all the miracles that Jesus performed all through his life and all through his ministry, people are saying, that's not the fresh start I need. <coughs> Change is hard. It's so hard. It's hard to... Uh, you know, one man said, uh, we hate change so much that we even keep bread and milk four days after its expiration because we don't want change. Amen? That's pretty bad. But you know, many times we don't want change, but Jesus comes to bring a new change. He say, he comes to bring a new hope, a new life in the world that it much needs. And he comes not only for that change for us, but the change for the world, but that our sins might be forgiven. And that we too might be born again. A fresh start. You notice when it snows that it covers up all the ugly? You notice that? I believe that's some nature's way or God's way of kind of giving us a fresh start. You know, if you after it melts down, we see how things really are on the inside. But, but that fresh start we get, that new cover of snow, you look out and, and the, the grass that might have had brown spots on it now is all beautiful and white. Those leaves that you worried about raking are all gone. Isn't that amazing? But they do appear back. Yeah, you just don't worry about raking them anymore. But a fresh start is something that we all desire. Uh, and today I want you to hear that because so many people are looking for something. And I'm pointing you to the star. I'm pointing you to the place of Bethlehem where you can start over. It doesn't matter what your past has been. It doesn't matter what you've done or what you've been through. God says, come unto me, all your heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Just come, just come on as you are. And I'll take you into my arms, and I'll forgive you of your sins, and I'll remind you to go and sin no more, and I'll, and I'll, I'll clothe you the white garment that will cover those sins. And you become a new person. I remember what it was like when I accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior. 
I remember the feeling I had, and I, and I want to keep that feeling deep in my heart and also in my mind all the time of what it felt like when those sins were lifted from my shoulders, and I realized that I was a new person, a new creature in Christ, and I was to put off the old man and his deeds and become new in Christ daily. And no matter what someone might say, someone say, well, I remember what they used to do, and there's no way they changed. You've got to keep an eye on that one because, you know, they're probably going to go back and do the same things they did before. But with Jesus, is a fresh start. It's not like that thing you tried in the bottle or in the, the pills that you took or that drug that you took or whatever it was or that, that, that piece of uh, uh, material things that you thought you had to have. Those things decay and they pass away and they're only temporary. But with Jesus Christ, it's not only beginning, but there's an ending. He says, I'm the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end, the first and last. And he that comes to me that thirsts shall never thirst again, for I will give them the water of life freely. I shared that with you last week. Fresh start. Fresh start. I got this old, uh, old, car, old truck I had. There's no Dodge, 64 Dodge. Ugliest thing I've ever seen in my life. But I love that old truck. It was a neat old truck. The only thing is though, when it come a rain, you had to go out there and spray uh, some stuff on the carburetor, some starter fluid, and you had to get a rag and wipe off the distributor because every time it rained, it just give up. It just said, I'm, I'm done, I can't do anything. It, it was a dry weather, truck that's all it was but I'd have to go to work in the morning so I'd get up and I'd go out there and I had a can of ether with me and I rag the first thing I do is wipe off the scribbler shoot the thing jump in start it jump back out wipe it shoot it again start it and finally get started and finally somebody said to me you know if you'd put a new distributor cap on that and you'd put a little stronger battery and clean the carburetor said guess what you wouldn't have to do that all the time I said that's all right I got used to it now <laughs> see we don't want change Sure enough, when I did do those things, the truck started like it should, and then I ended up selling it. So I, I, I just, you know, I just couldn't deal with it, all that change. Change is a good thing. It is a good thing. Change is a good thing, especially when it comes to Christ. It's a change that can change where you are. Uh, you know, when we were growing up, we used to haul wood across this creek, and. Uh, I don't know why we went across that creek. It seemed like that was the only day we could do that because the other days we had to do other things. But that wet day we had to cut wood. And so we'd go across this creek. And I remember us boys looking at each other and says, well, you know we're going to get stuck. We get stuck every time. But we'd go across that thing and we didn't have, we dare had enough energy or any of us that would do and ask Dad, why we keep going through this ditch? Because we knew that we'd be questioning authority and we would be in trouble. But every time we go across that ditch, I think we got across one time without getting stuck. And we'd have to get off, unload all the wood, get the tractor, pull the truck across, and then load it back. And then one day, we decided to build a bridge. It's amazing what happens when you build a bridge. We drove across there, we didn't have to unload anything, and, and you know, we just got the other side, we had plenty more time that day, but not one of us mentioned to our parents, hey, we should have built a bridge a long time ago. But I'm saying to you today, if you're going through the ditch and you're in ruts and you're not making progress, then maybe today is a good day to build a bridge. Mm. Today maybe is a good day to realize who Jesus really was in that day when he was born, the King of Kings. And maybe we need to go back to that place and begin to praise him in our life and to go forth knowing that change is a good thing in Jesus Christ. <coughs> Fresh start. All you got to do is say, today's a new day, Lord. Today's a new day, and today, Lord, I'm going to follow you. Today, I'm going to listen to you. And all these things that have, have burdened me down from the past, Lord, I just throw those out. Now, that's easy for me to say from the pulpit, but it takes a lot of prayer. It takes a lot of discernment. It takes a lot of times on your knees, and it takes a lot of support for one another because it's so easy for us to get back into that same rut we've been in all of our lives. And so I say today to you, call on God, call on your neighbors and your friends, and begin to start the journey together. For it says those things which we seem impossible with God through man are very possible with God.
a fresh start. Let's all start it out together. And let's see that when we get to that last walk of the way, we can hear our Master's voice say, Well done. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this day you've given us. Dear God, we all need a fresh start. We need that, that moment we say, Lord, I, I've, I've had enough of this old life. I've had enough of the way that things were. And now, Lord, I start afresh and I begin to take those steps one step at a time. Because I know who Jesus is. I know who that child was that was born in Bethlehem. I know he was my Savior, my Lord, and my Redeemer. And not only that, but he would grow and he would become a man and be placed upon the cross, not because he had to, because he wanted to, and because he loved us. <coughs> and because of the cross, Lord, we can start anew. And today, Lord, if there's one here that does not know you as Lord and Savior, I pray, Lord, they can be reminded of the cross, be reminded of Jesus being born into their lives, and they might find change, redemption, renewal, that they might begin afresh. And Lord, those that have ears to hear, let them hear your words, that they may too begin anew. A fresh start in Jesus. In the name of Jesus we pray. And amen. amen. As we start our fresh start, uh, start our fresh start, as we have a fresh start in Christ today, uh, let us turn to number 641. Fill my cup, Lord. And God will surely do that today if you allow Him. Fill my cup, Lord. Let it overflow and let it touch your neighbor and let it be uh, a reminder of God's goodness. Number 641. Watch you stand, those who are Fill my cup, Lord. I fill it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Fill my cup, Lord, I lift it up, Lord, come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Again, it's good to see each of you this morning. Don't forget Sunday school afterwards. And um, appreciate each and every one of you. Appreciate the ones that come and open the church and turn on the heat. Uh, I think my associate, did you have something to do with that? Did y'all do good? Okay. I come by yesterday actually to check. I drove up here to, I drove down here. I'm not sure if we're up here or down here. Are we down here or up here? Anyway, uh, I drove over here. That sounds better, don't sound over here. I drove over here to check on things in the road. And uh, of course it was clear right up Y'all got to must be have a warmer in that road because it was just clear as it could be. Uh, but we're glad we're here today. What a beautiful place to worship God. Anybody have anything before we dismiss? Good to see each of you this morning and good to have our visitors. Please come back and be with us. And, and don't forget the times we had. Friday will be our uh, uh, room in the end at, at Brown's sponsored by the, the uh, Mount Carmel Church. And also Rifle will be, what day is that? 19th. 19th. I'm sure we'll get that in the bulletin for that. Thank you, Nancy. Always. Hope your dad's doing better. And pray for your family. Let us pray. Gracious God, we now go from this place into Sunday school and to serve you out in this world. May we know, dear God, that we are not alone in this walk, that you're always with us, you're always guiding us. And dear God, forgive us of our sins and wrongdoings. And may our hearts always be in tune with you as we start a fresh start today. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And all God's people say it.